Welcome to the Crazy Hat Chemist. So here today we're going to do another video in atomic structure and electron co configurations. Ah, okay, here, let's get started. Bam! So today we're going to do the electron configuration, orbital box diagram, and a set of four quantum numbers for barium. You need a periodic table in order to do any of these problems here. So get yourself a periodic table, a little bit smaller than mine, hopefully. Okay, and get yourself a periodic table and find atomic number 56. That's Z of 56. That is barium. That's on your left-hand side of the periodic table, and that is a group two. That is a alkaline earth metal. Okay, so you're going to get the electron configuration for barium using the noble gas notation. Now, it's a Z of 56. So you're going to look on the far right-hand side of your periodic table. On the far right-hand side of your periodic table, you're going to find the noble gas that is prior to 56. Prior to 56 would be what? Xenon. Okay? So xenon is element number 54. So 54, 55, 56, you actually only need to count up to two. So you're going to have 54 that is xenon in brackets, and then thereafter, you're going to count to 55 and 56 to get barium. So here is the electron configuration for barium. Okay, this is the noble gas notation. I've been using this a number of different times, but I just wanted to point out that this is the noble gas notation. That is, you have to use the noble gas that is prior to that element. You cannot use the noble gas that is closest to it on the periodic table physically. It has to be a noble gas that is prior to that element. That means the atomic number of the noble gas needs to be less than the atomic number of the element of which you are trying to get the electron configuration for. All right, now that we got that, um, now what we're going to do is we're going to get the orbital box diagram. So we're going to use the noble gas notation using the orbital box diagram. This is super simple here. There's only a single box because it's an S-type orbital. Now I'm going to place those two electrons as they go, and that would be up and that would be down. So now the question is, is this paramagnetic or diamagnetic? Okay, so what is it? Paramagnetic? Diamagnetic? Ah, it is diamagnetic. So this would rather die than be in an electric field. It is not attracted to a magnetic field, in other words. In fact, if you take a look at everything in group two, everything in group two, the alkaline earth metals, all the alkaline earth metals are diamagnetic because they have a clean, completely filled um, whatever it is. So it could be a 2s, 3s, 4s, 5s, 6s, or 7s orbital because they're all like 6s2 just like this barium. Hopefully that makes sense for you. So everything in the alkaline earth metals are going to be diamagnetic assuming that they are a um, not a charged ion, right? They haven't lost their two electrons. And even so, those would be diamagnetic as well. Hmm, think about that. Okay, so there are two valence electrons because a barium is in group two. Hopefully that works for you too. And you can see that it's the largest principal quantum number, S and P of the largest principal quantum number. There is no 6P of, because we haven't actually gotten that far. So that's why there's only a 6S2. Okay, now I'm going to circle an electron here, and we're going to get the four quantum numbers representing that particular electron. So you're going to pause the video, get an N, an L, an M sub L, and an M sub S value of that particular electron to get yourself some lots of practice. So the N value, what is the principal quantum number of which this electron is in? What orbital energy level is it in? It's N of 6 because it's a 6S. So N of 6, there's your first one. Okay, so N, L, we're going to get L. L is the type of orbital in which it is in. It's in an S-type orbital, sharp, sharp. Okay, so an S-type orbital has an L value of zero. Okay, so you know the L value of zero. Now, the next one is to get the M sub L value. The M sub L, L, M sub L value is the type of box that it is in. Which box is it in? So you're going to label the box as zero. And you can't do the one or the negative one or the negative uh, uh, two or the positive two either. So it's just in box zero. So the M sub L value is zero because there is no 3D orientation of a sphere. That's what the M sub L value represents is the 3D orientation of that orbital within the XYZ plane. So that's why it's zero because you cannot orient a sphere. Hopefully that works for you. Now we have one more to do and that's the M sub S value. That's the spin of the electron. And that arrow is going up, that's heaven facing, that is positive. So the M sub S value is positive one half. 
And here are all four quantum numbers here for you, all delineated. So it's n of 6, l of 0, m sub l of 0, and m sub s of plus 1 half. Okay, hopefully that worked for you. Okay, hey, here's a little joke here. I don't have it written down, but what do you do to a dead chemist? Think about it. This is elemental humor. In fact, it relates to this particular problem. What do you do to a dead chemist? You bury him. That's correct. You bury him. That's what you do to a dead chemist. So um, here's a, well, I'm not sure if it's going to be a crazy hat or not, but it is a hat nonetheless, kind of. So it's actually more of a helmet. Okay. And so bicycling is my favorite pastime. Uh, besides gardening, I love gardening too, but bicycling is one of my favorite pastimes. So if you see me on the bike trail or on the road or something like that, say hello. Give me a thumbs up if you like that video. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel and maybe I'll see you out on that trail somewhere bicycling. Have a great day. I'll see you for more chemistry, cool chemistry videos. Bye now.